Amen. I want to talk a little bit about, I mean, this may bore some of you, or you might learn something from some of this. Amen. The reason I say that is because if you haven't done doctrine for a while, sometimes you tend to forget a few things along the way. Hello? Especially when you are challenged with a question. So I may teach something and also challenge myself with a question. And I may have to try to help me answer it. Thank you, Brother AJ. I appreciate that. I'll go through this water like ain't nobody's business. You want to find the golden egg? Okay, well, that's good, brother. Amen. I seen a pastor friend of mine. Had, they did something, they're doing something neat for Easter because they, I mean, I won't get into the question, Easter eggs and all that kind of stuff and how folks believe in all that stuff. Let me just leave that alone for now. I don't, I don't want to start a fight here. Amen. But they're doing, they're doing resurrection rocks. They're doing a rock hunt. Amen. And <laughs> Amen with, well, glory to them. Amen. But anyway, they're painting them up and doing all kinds of different things to them. But uh, more power to them. Praise God. If you have your Bible with you, it's okay. Because Brother Chris, amen, is going to get up there. Amen. And he's going to put these things up on the board for us as we do. But I want to talk about the doctrine of baptism. Baptism. Everybody say it. Baptism. baptism. The doctrine of baptism. Uh, you know, Pilate asked a crazy question. He said, what is truth? He was looking truth right in the face, but he asked the question anyway. It was almost redundant. To come to the question and say, what is truth? Amen. Jesus had an answer. He says, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word, he said, is what? Okay, let me try this again. Jesus said, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Amen. That's why opinions are weak. Opinions matter not. Because everybody's got an opinion. Hello? What do you hang your opinion on is the question. Do you hang it on the world view or do you hang it on the word of God? The word or the world? Amen. Some folks say that there are many roads that lead to Chicago. That by there's many roads that lead to heaven also. I disagree with that. There's one way to heaven and that is through Jesus Christ. Y'all want to finish this for me? One Lord. Just double check and make sure y'all still remember. Amen. I told you, I'm just doing a little doctrine tonight. I'm, I'm not doing anything crazy here tonight. Uh, I, might, I might enlighten you on a couple things maybe along the way. Who knows? Stuff you might have thought you knew but didn't realize you knew. Amen. Um, <clears throat> Paul emphatically stated there is only one true gospel. Gospel is what? Can somebody tell me what the gospel is? Good news, right? Is that what Paul said the gospel was? That's what the word gospel means, actually, but that's not what the gospel is. Gospel means good news. But what is the good news? What did the apostle Paul say it was? Anybody know? There you go. Brother D's pop quizzing us again. Real simple. It's the death, the birth resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is the gospel. We are to preach the gospel that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. Why is that so significant? I'll tell you why it's so significant. You go and die and see if you rise again. That's why it's significant. He died and he rose again. I go to Evergreen Cemetery to visit my mother and she's still there. Amen. One day when the trumpet of God sounds, I don't think she'll be there anymore. Amen. Praise God. That's why the Bible said, God forbid, let, every, let God be true and every man the liar. As written, thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and you might overcome when thou art judged. We must not allow tradition to stand in the way of truth. Hello? That even includes things we might be taught in an apostolic church. If it don't line up to the word of God, hello, it ain't true. Just because you're apostolic, hello, doesn't mean that everything that comes out of that mouth is true. 
Well, or else we wouldn't have the differences of opinions now, would we? Amen. We better make sure we know what we're talking about through the Word of God. Not because of somebody's more charismatic in their preaching. Not because somebody has a, a, a greater ability to run a place. Not because somebody has a, a, a better ability to, to, to build a church or to do whatever it may be. That has no bearing on truth. Thy word is truth. <clears throat> that includes me. If I go counter to the word of God, I expect you to call me out on it. Not in public and try to embarrass me, thank you. You wouldn't want me to do it to you here, would you? Hello? Would you? Would you want me to come call you out in the middle of a church service? No. Then have the reasonable decency to give me the same honor. I will not do it to you. You will not do it to me. Amen. And we can discuss it reasonably. Amen. You shall know the truth and the what? Truth shall make you free. Amen. Is baptism essential? Is it more than just an outward sign? You see, some churches teach it's just an outward sign. Right? An outward sign. So the first question we seek the answer must be that of necessity of water baptism. Must we partake of this or is it merely an outward sign? So let's go to the command of Christ in Mark 16 and 16. He said what? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. That, I want to tell you something. That verse is self-explanatory. You got to believe. You got to be baptized. Pretty much simple, isn't it? I mean, he didn't mince words there. It is what it is. Amen. <laughs> The problem we encounter sometimes, some people seem to read it as he that believeth and is saved should be baptized. Amen. That's how they read it. They don't read it the right way. John chapter 3, when we talk about Nicodemus, we must be born again. He said of the water and of the spirit. Amen. How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time to his mother's womb be born? And Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. <clears throat> Excuse me. There is an argument today which claims that Jesus spoke of the natural birth when he said, born of water. Amen. And that he was not referring to water baptism. See, that's the argument you'll get. Because they'll say when you're born of water, it's talking about the amniotic sac, first born, the water breaks, amen, and you come through the birth canal. That you're that way born of water. I've heard that argument before. Have people give me that argument before, as a matter of fact. The problem is that argument, thank you, Brother Aiden, you, you did it, man. I'm so proud of you. You're so awesome sometimes. Come here. Who's got some wind in it? Me. No, Jason. I don't want to go in front of you. Thank you, Jason, for volunteering, son. Thank you. Amen. You know what? We're going to go to McDonald's later, okay? All right. Tell you what. I did not choose wisely, did I? I wasn't thinking about Olivia. I forgot about her. Amen. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Come here, Brother Dave, George. Come here, Brother Sister Missy. Come here. Come here. I don't want y'all to have a hard time. All right. The other end, Dave. You've got the cutting end of the sword. Thank you. You'd think a guy would learn how to use a sword. You put a Makita in his hand, he's like, what? You put a sword in his hand, he's got it upside down. All right. <laughs> Here's what happens sometimes, because this is exactly, and if you've ever taught a Bible study, or you've ever dealt with somebody of a different faith, 
I want to tell you something. Let me tell you what happens. All of a sudden, all that stuff you're taught and all that stuff you believe in, there's a spirit that comes along. I'm going to tell you right now. It all starts to battle when two go against each other. You all know that? And all of a sudden, has anybody had this happen? All of a sudden, all that stuff you have in your brain at any given time, you can't remember half of it when you start talking to one another. And after the fight's over with, you remember all of it again. Why? Because there's a presence of the enemy. That, go on, put them up there. Go on, put them up there. Now be nice to one. Don't, don't, don't break some. Go on. Let me see. You. And he says, he says, hold. Now, then, you, just, you just cut your hand off. It's a very sharp sword. Now listen. Here's what takes place, okay? All of a sudden she goes, you must be born again of the water. Stop right there. Don't go crazy now. He said, well, wait a minute. Water, you're talking about, you are born of the water when you're naturally born. Uh-oh. How do you answer that? How do you answer that? How do you, what? Brother Lloyd said again, thank you, Brother Lloyd, but how else do you answer that? Because they're going to tell you that's a spiritual baptism. That's, that's a baptism of the word. Amen. You're washing of the water of the word is what they'll say. Amen. So the question comes into play. Amen. How do we explain the refutation of that argument? Just prior to birth, the Bible, or not the Bible, the natural world says the amniotic sac, which is a bag of water that ruptures, resulted in a rush of water from the mother's body. If that sac ruptures early in labor, as it frequently happens, the birth is termed a dry. Is that right, sister? I know you know a lot of these terms, right? I, you, so you have to help me with some of this stuff. If I get if I get out of if I get out of phys- anatomy line, just brother D, that's not right. Just but be, do it nicely. Amen. It's called a dry birth, and has never been born of water. Y'all understand that? Never been born of water. If that is what the Lord meant, they would therefore be eternally excluded from God's kingdom. So it cannot be, listen to me, a natural that he's talking about by being born of water. Y'all understand that? Now whack his sword. Whack it like Okay. (laughs) He just don't like to lose is what it boils down to. (laughs) Amen. Because the Bible says, One of the soldiers pierced his side, and forthwith there came out what? Blood and water. With me. Blood and water. Now listen, the Bible said the life of the flesh is in the... So the word life can be substituted for blood. So not just blood came out, but it made sure to tell you blood and water came out. Came out of the side. Living water. Y'all understand that? Whack him again. Take that. Amen. Living water. Talking about the doctrine of baptism. Amen. That's why the Bible says that Adam was the first Adam. Amen. But uh, Jesus was called the second Adam. Amen. Since Adam was a picture of the first. Amen. And Jesus caused a deep, I mean, God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And Eve was taken from his rib. Very same way that Jesus died on the cross. Technically, he was sleeping. As he has said, when people die, they're not dead, but they are what? Sleeping, amen. What was pulled from his side was his bride. In other words, amen, the living water is for his bride. Amen. Do you all understand that? Just like, just like, just like in the book of Genesis, amen, when put Adam to sleep, all of a sudden he reached in and he pulled, basically made Eve out of Adam's rib. Very much the same way when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, amen, God reached in and took that living water to make his bride. When a soldier pierced his side. We understand that concept? Okay, good. <laughs> That's why the spirit, the water, and the blood, they agree in one. Amen. Why? In 1 John 5 and 8, there are three that bear witness in the earth. Say in the earth. Why do we have to have three that bear witness in the earth? What's the Old Testament rule? In the mouth of what? Two or three witnesses, let every word be so God not only has a witness on the earth, he has a witness where? Thank you. He has a witness in heaven and in earth. Amen. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. My goodness. Woo. Man. There are three that bear witness in the earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three. Amen. 
That's why we not only not be born of the Spirit also, but we also must be born of the water. Of the water and of the Spirit. Amen. Well, Peter had a command in Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Anybody remember what that is? What was it Peter's command? In Acts 2, 37. Now, I know you all know 2, 38. What about 2, 37? See, I messed you all up, didn't I? See, you've got 238 so down. See, I told you all, y'all stable. Like, uh, 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 uh. Come on, pull that sword back. You can't do it, can you? What's 237? Can't do it, can you? Whack her, give her. Give her, There you go. See? Can't remember it. What did he say? That's 239. What's 237? Now, when they heard this, they were what? They were what? Just like who? They were pricked in their heart. Okay? Hello? Now we fix it to get somewhere. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, now you can whack him again. Repent if you baptize. <laughs> Amen. You know what Peter didn't say? Accept Jesus as your personal Savior. Stuff. Peter didn't hand him a track. He preached. Man, y'all enjoying this way too much, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Jesus gave what Peter the what? The keys to the kingdom. Right? Amen. <laughs> Excuse me. That's why he said what? For the remission of sins. The Greek word there is ice. E-I-S. Ice, baby. No, I just thought I'd get your attention that way if I did it that way. It's E-I-S, E-I-S, baby. In other words, it's a Greek word that means for the remissions of sins. There are some that says no, even if that's not what it means. But it does mean for the remission of sin. I can give you scriptural proof beyond this. Amen. That every time ice is used is for something. For the remission of sins. Sometimes folks try to talk around that. Amen. Like it's not even. You know, they try to use the time because of remission of sins. That's what they try to say. That that means because of. But that's not what that means. Amen. Uh, because we found that Peter said. While Peter yet spake these words. Amen. You find it interesting in Acts chapter uh, Acts chapter 10, <laughs> excuse me, uh, that while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word, and they of the circumcisions believed, were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles poured out the gift of the, what, Holy Ghost, right? He said, if we heard them speak in tongues and magnify God, then answered Peter, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them. Now listen, he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they prayed with them there and tarried certain days. Here we find the story of Cornelius, who was a righteous man. Amen. But Peter made it very clear to him. Amen. Even after he received the Holy Ghost first, he commanded him still to be water baptized. I mean, if it's just something you're supposed to do, why bother at all? He commanded baptism. He didn't say it was optional. He commanded him to be baptized. Because it's just him and his household there. Who's he trying to impress? He doesn't have anyone to impress. He doesn't have anybody to have to show forth some, some glorious expectation. But instead, there's some kind of expression of a clear conscience before God. But no, he commanded baptism. He commanded him to be baptized. You know what the command means? You better do it. He didn't ask him politely to be baptized. It felt like, well, listen, folks, if you really feel like you should be baptized, i got some water down here. He commanded, saying, you need to be baptized. You need to be baptized. Amen. If baptism was not essential, the Father commanded it. Amen. Uh, Listen, we find the plan of salvation throughout all the Old Testament. Amen. You'll find the book of Exodus where the children of Israel go out of Israel, come out of Egypt, go through the go through the waters, amen, of the Red Sea. Amen. They follow a cloud, a cloud by day and a pillar of cloud fire by night. Amen. 
Again, referencing the same thing that we see maybe coming out of Egypt, a type of repentance, going through the Red Sea, a type of being water baptized. Why do we do this? Because Pharaoh chased after him. What happened to Pharaoh? Everybody that chased after him drowned in the Red Sea. Amen. Really that simple. Amen. They were covered over by the Red Sea. Uh, and God led them. I, I could go on with that. I, I don't want to read too much into that stuff. I want to continue on. Amen. Oh. Uh, in the New Testament, uh, the, the, bat, the water baptism is the New Testament equivalent of circumcision. Amen. It's the equivalent of circumcision. Amen. Excuse me. <coughs> I'm having a hard time. Just give me a second. Give me Colossians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. Colossians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. In whom you are also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and put off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him. What? Wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. Amen. The, 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 likens it to circumcision. Why is circumcision important? What did he tell Moses? If Moses wouldn't circumcise his son in the Old Testament, what he said he was going to do? He cut off his whole family. Why? Why was circumcision so important? Anybody know? The act of circumcision is very simple. Y'all want to hold your ears on this one if you need to. Amen. But it's the cutting off of the flesh. Right? Literally, the skin is stretched, just like Jesus was stretched on the cross. It's cut off, like Jesus was cut off for the land of the living. It's buried in the ground, and there is blood. That's why. That's why we are to be buried in water baptism. It's a type of our burial, just like circumcision was. Amen. We are buried in water baptism. We are to be buried with him. Do you all understand that? Y'all get that now? Amen. Just double checking with y'all. Amen. That's why the only way to keep from breaking that new covenant, amen, is to be water baptized. Amen. Do we do it by sprinkling, or it's called aspersion, as some people like to call it? Or do we do it by immersion? Do we dunk them like a donut? We, you know, I, I, I thought this is probably the easiest argument I've ever had with anybody. I said, if, if baptism is a burial, have you ever sprinkled dirt on something that you just buried? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Missy. Anytime you feel like you got a shot, Brother Dave or Sister Missy, go ahead and take it. <laughs> she enjoyed this too much. She enjoyed this too much, huh? <laughs> Amen. Uh, you know, the immersion is very simple. The Bible said there was much water there. They were covered in water. They were there was never one place. The Greek word is rantizo, which means to sprinkle. But, the Greek, but in the New Testament, the word has always been baptizo. It means to cover completely over. Amen. That's what it means, to be completely covered. Amen. To be whelmed over. Just makes sense. Amen. Makes sense that when you baptize something, you... Listen, the, the Jews had this thing, a unique thing to do. They had ritual baths, they called them. They, they were they're called mikvahs. And they would do that after a time of repentance. They would go to a mikvah. Amen. They would dunk themselves in a mikvah. It was something done very common, actually, amen, for them. Now, it was to typify what was to come, amen, and through water baptism, amen. You know, they, you'll find them, uh, 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 if you look up a mikvah sometime, M-I-K-V-A-H, amen, just Google it up. You'll see what the process they used it for. But you'll find is very type of baptism, amen, where their folks would come and they would literally were just like John. Just when Jesus came, amen, Jesus was literally mikvah, it says, into the, amen, into the, into the Jordan River, amen. So, uh, just, uh, mikvah was a type of ritual bathing, amen, a ritual washing, praise God. Um, Any time baptism was always done in Scripture, it was always done by immersion. You'll never find it any place where there was sprinkling. The only time you'll finish, find sprinkling is one place, not in but just in how they used to do it at the temple, in the Jews, at the temple. They would find them, and they would put their names in a record. They'd anoint them with oil, and they'd sprinkle them with water. That's how it was done. Amen. 
But you got to remember that was the, under the Levitical law or the Levitical priesthood. That was not under the priesthood of Melchizedek. Jesus was under the priesthood of Melchizedek, which means if he was going to be water baptized, he was going to be baptized for the sins of the world, not for the sins of a nation, but for the sins of the world. Amen. But that's why he had a different baptism completely and totally. Amen. In Acts chapter 8, Jesus command, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, Philip commanded the chariot to stand still. Amen. And both, they both went down into the water, him and the eunuch. And when they would come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. How do you like to know that? Wouldn't that be neat to baptize somebody and then you ain't dead no more? Ain't that cool? I mean, I, I, you know, I don't know. There, there's a reason the Bible records this. I'm not exactly sure what it's for, but it ought to be interesting to really try to study that and try to find out why Philip all of a sudden ends up in a Zotus. Place called. It's interesting. All of a sudden, I'm baptizing somebody, then I'm somewhere else. It's as if to say, like, he had to be somewhere else, but it was so necessitized that this man be water baptized that God said, don't worry, I'll get you there on time. You know, you know what I mean? Y- y'all know what I'm talking about? Anybody, anybody ever been in a position where, where you're dealing with somebody? Amen. But the timing is awful. I mean, you just sometimes timing just gets in your way. Can I tell you something? Just do the Lord's work and let God finish up the rest of the stuff. I mean, it. just go on and do what God's to do. Because I promise you, that one time all of a sudden you cancel the one Bible study, hello, all the Bible studies will get canceled. Okay? You've got to stay on those times. Man, I'm telling you, because if you let them do it, Amen. You, you don't want to do it today. Well, how about we just do it the next day? Amen. If you actually can't do it tomorrow, okay, by doing it tomorrow instead of trying to wait a week, because if they got a week to wait, the enemy will start working. All of a sudden, family members will start calling, and they're a cult, and ties in Jesus' name, how dare they, and all that stuff. You know what I mean? It's, you know, all that stuff will start taking place, right? Of course, we know the great argument, don't we? If I just want to cut to the chase of the matter, what's the great argument? Anybody know what the great argument is to water baptism that's against the baptism in Jesus' name? Anybody? Anybody? The argument that's used against it is? Huh? Who said it? The what? Nope. It's not the argument. What's the great argument against baptizing in Jesus' name? That's exactly right. You, you don't baptize in Jesus' name. You baptize how? In the name of the Father and of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. That's the real argument. Works is part of the argument, but that's not the, you know, the real main argument is, you know, if you're going to, you know, Matthew 20, 19, put it up there. Let's go on, put it up there. Matthew 28, 19. <laughs> Most of y'all can quote Go ye therefore, all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, right? What did Jesus say? Amen. He said, I have come in my Father's name. Smack him. Amen. <laughs> no. The angel, came, the angel came to Mary and said, You shall call his name. So the name of the Son. The Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, he said, Whom the Father will send in my name. What's his name? There you go. Amen. Now you have the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And anybody know what that name is? Thank you. No, they don't have to. They're just doing it. I'm, I'm trying to show them something, Jacob, okay? Okay? But thank you for asking. Spiritually, Jacob. There's a worldly spirit. Starts the spirit of lies starts fighting back. The spirit of false doctrine starts that one's little Zorro hat on. You see, because here's the funny thing is you may have all the knowledge in the world about this stuff, but you never go against somebody that don't against the one guy that knows everything every time one that's willing to you see the reason is they don't want to engage you those that don't know anything about it don't want to engage you you know why they don't want to engage you because they'll know you'd be pretty good with that thing amen I had a similar situation happen to me years ago amen 
we were doing something, a valuable lesson I learned. We were doing something uh, with the jail ministry and uh, pastors to get involved with some local churches to get involved with some things together, a collaboration. I wasn't all for it, but I, I was doing it anyway, what my pastor asked me to do. And uh, uh, sure enough, they, everything was supposed to be on the up and up. There wasn't going to be no doctrine talk. We were just going to come together. And no sooner got in the door, bam, we had about four of them on swinging doctrine questions. But I'm like, I just wanted to come in and get some sausage and eggs and a fridge. And here you are, just doctrinating me. Just coming left and right with questions. I'm just like, <laughs> that's how I felt. I'm telling you, that's how I felt. I felt like I was attacked. You know what I mean? And, and the question is, and I was a little frustrated with it because I came in there with my arms down. I didn't come in with my sword up. Now, if I'd been smart, I'd come in with my sword up. I came in with my arms down. And I'll tell you something, amen. We, we, we need to be careful. Amen. We need to be careful because it's important. Amen. That's why the importance. Is it important what, how you baptize? Is, is it, some folks say it's not even important. I mean, he knows what his name is. That's what they'll say. Does it matter if you just say the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Yeah, it does matter. You know why it matters? Because it was Jesus that died on the cross. It was Jesus that gave his blood. It was Jesus that shed his blood. It wasn't just the name of the Father. It wasn't just some kind of titled entity. Amen. No, it was the name of a man. It's the precious blood of Jesus that saves you. Amen. And I think you need to understand something here today. If I was chemistry, if I take one part oxygen, I mix it with two parts hydrogen, the result is H2O. We call that water. Right? But if I add carbon, the result is formaldehyde. So all I gotta do is just change the form just a little bit, and it becomes formaldehyde. Hello? That's why it's important, amen? It's important. If you remove the hydrogen, the result is CO, which is carbon monoxide, which will kill you. My point is you can't add anything to it. You can't take anything from it, amen? The formula is what he gave us. You know, you think, listen, if he would have told his disciples to baptize any other way, they would have surely done it. But the Bible makes it very clear that he pulled them aside and made sure they knew. The Bible tells them that if they, he, he took them aside amen, and answered all their questions. In other words, they understood everything he said. In other words, the Bible says they, they understood him. In other words, they understood everything he spoke to them. So there was no questions in their mind. Peter wasn't just, you know, uh, uh, you know he, he was just, you know, it was some kind of thing where you just take the doctrine and uh, just say, uh, just the power of or, or, or authority of Jesus. That's not what it was. Amen. In other words, you have some people, that's not faith when you go and you baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, which is Jesus. Because you're afraid you're just going to, you kidding me? No. I'm going to baptize, you know who I pray? When I pray, I pray in Jesus' name. When I eat my food, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. When I pray over people, I pray in Jesus' name. What in the world would make you think I'm going to do something different when I baptize somebody? If you're all that under the authority, why don't, when it comes time to praying for folks, why don't you say, I, I pray for you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? I never hear them say that. You know, it's just like, <laughs> it's just like I, I love how, well, I, I'm stepping out here, but I might as well do it now. Here I go. It's just like when folks get married, all of a sudden all these people want to wear pants all the time and finally want to put a dress on. Y'all ever notice that? Yep. All of a sudden, it's important to get a dress now because I'm getting married. Well, you know what? I got married too. The Bible calls me the bride of Christ. Amen. Praise God. Folks, I want y'all to understand some things here. Baptism is so essential to doctrine. The importance of baptism cannot be understated. The importance of immersion, the importance of the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the remission of sins. Let's not forget that. It's for the remission of sins. Not for the forgiveness, but for the remission of those sins. Forgiveness comes, amen, at the altar of repentance. Remission comes at water baptism. Y'all know there is a difference between forgiveness and remission? Hello? Y'all know what that means? Anybody know the difference between forgiveness and remission is, anybody? If you don't know, let, let, me, let me just break it down for you. Forgiveness is uh, the, the, uh, the wrath is allayed. 
but remission is the actual executed judgment. In other words, the difference is you go into a courtroom. Forgiveness is I'm going to put you on parole. Remission is what are you doing in my courtroom? You're not even supposed to be here. You're not even on my docket. So that's the difference between forgiveness and remission. There's only one way to heaven, folks. Anybody know what that way is? Come on, thank you. Praise God. Amen. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. He's the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You know, John 14, because I, I want to do this. Let's, we'll talk about the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let's do something else while we're talking about the name of something. Okay? Give me John chapter 14, verse 26. <coughs> I'm going to give you three verses, and I promise I'm going to slow it down and finish up. Okay. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen. So that is the name of the Holy Ghost. Give me Ephesians chapter 3, verse 15. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is. It's also the family name. Not just the name of the Father. Not just the name of the Son. Not just the name of the Holy Ghost. But it's also our family name. You are people of the name of Jesus. Amen. Matter of fact, let's continue on. Acts chapter 4 and 12. Some of y'all can quote for me anyway. Go on, go ahead, go ahead, Brother Travis, quote that. It's the only name. Hello, let's try that. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven. Are y'all under heaven? Then you ain't got no other names to work with. Go give him some water back there. Come, hey, I'm serious, go give him that water for me. Help him out a little bit there. Thank you. I got him all excited back there, and he's all, he can't function. I start talking about water baptism. He's about, he's, he's about to pull his track out of his pocket and go, preach. I can hear him. Amen. <laughs> Colossians 3 and 17. Let's, we're going we're to continue on with a couple more scriptures, and I promise I'm, I'm finishing up. I, I promise you. I got a little more I can say on this, but I'm, I'm not going to. Colossians 3 and 17, this is why I said, listen, whatsoever you do, in word, thy word is, word is things you say, deed is things you do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father, by him. Let's say it, do all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy, come on. Name of the Lord Jesus. What shall you do in word or deed? Things you say and things you do. Things you say and things you do. When I'm calling on the name of Jesus Christ in water baptism, it's something I'm saying, and water baptizing is something I'm doing. Amen. And I'm going to use the name of Jesus Christ because that's the only baptismal formula that I have. Period. The book of Acts makes it very clear. There's some folks will argue, say, if you folks will ever get out of the books of Acts, book of Acts, y'all might learn something, I'll tell you. I wish they'd start reading the book of Acts and get some facts. See, I call it the book of facts. Amen. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I know most of y'all have done the check thing. I'm not here to do that. Listen, there's historical proof I could give you. Amen, and all that kind of stuff. And what, what's one of, the, one of the greatest objections that you hear to water baptism for salvation? Any, anybody know? Anybody ever just run across this stuff? Anybody? The last thing, and I'm going to say it, I'm going to, I'm going to dismiss this. What's the one thing? Uh, if, I, if I've got this thing out, you know what I mean? Here's what happens, Brother Dave. Come here. Come here, Brother Dave. Let me help you. I'm going to help you right now. No, no, you're just a weak sword. Get over here. Uh, I won't. But I hear you about your water baptismal thing. 
But the thief on the cross didn't have to be water baptized. Thief on the cross, be water baptized, and he was saved. Come on, somebody. What? Oh, quit trying to be a preacher. What was it? Come on. What was it? He was under the law. Anybody? You're actually close to right, but I'm, I'm going to put it a little more delicately than that. What? Jesus had not yet been glorified. He hadn't even been to heaven to sprinkle the blood yet. He was still alive. Ain't no blood been shed yet. So he got a divine command. Hello? He got a divine... Get back now. <laughs> That's what you... Jeez. Yes, from the woman. Goodness gracious, the woman thou gavest me. No, here we go, never mind. All right, I'll be, I won't get everybody in trouble here. I just need to shut up real quickly. <laughs> Amen. In Acts chapter 60, verse 31, let me finish up with this. I've said that a couple times, but it's important. I, I, I want to give you a couple more things that people like to say, okay? Because if I don't, you're not going to know how to answer them. Now, some of you may already, but some of you may. And this is really important to me, and this is, because this, this one always bothered me. I always had a hard time explaining to people how to answer this one. Okay? I, I had an ideal, and I knew what I had been taught, but I never felt like it was a good, solid answer. It was a good answer, but it wasn't a solid answer. And so they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. He was talking about the Philippian jailer in Acts chapter 16, verse 13. It's true that Paul answered the jailer, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. However, that was not all he said. Amen. <clears throat> Paul was the very first man to carry the gospel into Philippi. Nobody else had ever heard about this great salvation that Jesus could bring. If a jailer we find a man who could not be uh, I'm sorry, in the jailer we find a man who could not be made to understand plan of salvation until he first acknowledged that Christ really was the Messiah. Or as Brother Lloyd, you got to have a revelation first, Brother Lloyd. you got to have a revelation of who he is. He is the Messiah. He meant. And Paul was saying, if you'll believe that Jesus Christ, I can explain to you how to be saved. Because it doesn't make sense, right? That makes plenty of sense, right? If you don't first believe, I don't no use to be telling you the rest of the plan. Right. Amen. It ain't no use to finish it up. He said, you got to first believe. Amen. you got to first you got to have faith to believe. Amen. Uh, he said, he, then he said, I can explain how to. I mean, why tell a man to offer a prayer of repentance to Jesus unless he believes that Jesus is the Christ? The first step to anyone's salvation is to believe. That is not, however, the final step. If Paul made it, some say that the moment the jailer believed that he became saved, there's a great problem with the remainder of that verse. Let me, let's go ahead and put this up here. Give me Acts chapter 16, verse 31. <laughs> and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. I want you to hear that part. And thy house. If the jailer was saved upon believing, then at the same instant his entire family became saved, whether they believed or not. You can't be saved for somebody else. You can't do it. Don't understand that? You can't be saved for somebody else. That's what they're saying here. He said, thou shalt be saved, thou and thine house. What are you saying? He said, no, he's talking about a future tense. Listen, if I can get you saved, you can save the rest of your house. Because if I can't get you saved, how is they going to hear? Y'all understand that? That's what he was trying to, try, trying to convey there. That was the point. He, now listen, you say, well, you're putting words in his mouth. Then you tell me what he was trying to say. You're telling me that, if because if I listen to what you're telling me, you're telling me that all that he had to do was believe and everybody else got saved around him. That's simply impossible. Scriptural to boot. Amen. Consider verse 32 and 33. Let's, let's just move on for a couple more verses. I want, to, I want to lay something out here real quick. 
And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his straight way. Okay? <laughs> Evidently, Paul did not just tell them to believe. Y'all hear me? Apparently, Paul said something more than believing. When he spake unto them the word of the Lord, he must have included baptism. Listen to what he says. He spake unto the word of the Lord. When he said, they spake unto him the word of the Lord. And to all who were in his house. And he took them. That's the only way they could have been saved. Is if the word was spoken not just to him, but to everybody else in the house. They washed their stripes and was baptized all his and were straight away. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, mercy. I should get to the saved and works question later, but I'm just going to tell you quite simply, there's a difference between works and obedience. Amen. Uh, and I won't get into that tonight. I'm running out of time, and I don't want to wear you out. Let's all stand tonight. I was trying to be diligent with your time. Amen. I was actually going to line you all up and give you the argument question, but I thought, no, I better not do that. You might be tired, and some of you might get too fired up and get crazy with that thing. And I thought, and that's the last thing. I need a lawsuit for somebody smacking somebody across the head because Brother D brought out some cane sores. Jacob, sit down and put your shirt down. Listen, the essential water baptism cannot be said enough. Listen, we doctrine around here sometimes, folk. I, I know some of you know this stuff already, and I know many of you know a lot of this stuff, okay? I get it. But I believe in just preaching it sometimes. Sometimes we just need to be reminded, amen, in doctrine. Praise God. Preach the doctrine. The Bible tells us to preach the doctrine, to edify the body of Christ, teach certain things. And if we don't understand baptism, we don't know what, we're not going to know what to say when that time comes when you're crossed up swords with somebody and you're going to cross swords with people there will be times you it's inevitable you will cross swords i like i like everybody just to, to lift your hands into the lord right now if you would please amen i want you to just call upon the name of the lord for a moment shall you i will say yes Lord, yes, to you.